What is up YouTube, back in the garage. Today we have an exciting video because we are getting closer and closer to this supercharged MR2 actually running, actually being boosted. Today we are actually going to start hooking up the components necessary to tune this thing, which is exciting. Um, and this video is gonna be slightly out of order because theoretically the intake and charge piping should be um, maybe before this. Uh, but I want to go ahead and get everything hooked up. I'm still waiting on a few parts for the intake side of things. So if it seems a little bit out of order, don't worry. Um, I realize that, but uh, that video should be coming directly after this, hopefully. So a lot of MR2 content coming up here, and we're hopefully going to get this thing very close and be able to start learning how to tune. So today I have a lot of the major components to get this thing tuned, and that includes a standalone ECU, the Apexi Power FC, uh, along with the hand controller for that, a AEM wideband sensor and gauge, and then also boost gauge, but I'm not sure if we'll get to that in this video. And I am missing one piece of the puzzle. So the Apexi Power FC uh, pretty much just comes with this handheld device, which um, you can't do any logging with. So I actually have a data log it on the way, brand new from uh, the data logit company. Now, I know what you're thinking. Everybody's been telling me, don't get the Apexi Power FC. It's old technology. Um, you know, there's better ECUs out there to make my life easier. My response to that is yes, there are plenty of better ECUs, plenty of better options, all for double the price of what I got the Apexi Power FC for. So here is my thought process, not to justify myself, but just so you guys know where my head's at. Um, this is my first car that I will be ever tuning and I figure why not learn on an ECU that there's already a lot of information out there on for the two ZZs and also why not spend the least amount of money possible for the learning part of it. It doesn't seem smart to me to go all out on my first one ever maybe to find out that I don't enjoy it. So I'm going to try to learn on the Power FC um, to keep things cheap and to see if I enjoy tuning and to see if I can learn it. And then obviously down the road, there's nothing stopping me from upgrading and selling the Power FC. They hold their value plenty, uh, like I said, because uh, they're kind of proven on the two ZZs. Obviously they have their issues, um, I know that, and they have their restraints, I guess, but they are still an affordable option and a very good one, I would say. So that's what I'm going with. I'm hoping to provide some good content on the Power FC because it's, it is kind of hard to find it in a video format. So uh, I'm gonna be documenting my learning process, my learning curve. So if anybody else is looking to do that with their 2ZZ MR2 or Celica or Matrix, you know, hopefully I, I get some good content out there on how to tune that and whatnot. So with that being said, let's uh, go ahead and get into it and I'll start explaining uh, what's going on here. So one of the biggest restraints with the Power FC is that it cannot read wideband sensor readings. From what I've seen, people pretty much tune out the stock O2 sensor in the Apexi Power FC uh, to basically run open loop the whole time. Basically to run off of their uh, fuel maps and ignition maps uh, solely. No feedback loop from the O2 sensor. Where normally like the stock ECU and even these Apexi Power FCs uh, at you know idle, cruising, low throttle, those would have a closed feedback loop, a closed loop, uh, running off of the O2 sensor, correcting as the O2 sensor fluctuates between the zero and one volts or the 14 and 15 air fuel ratio. So most people just tune that out, run open loop the whole time off of the fuel maps, which is most likely where I'll end up. But I did, obviously, as you saw, I put in two bungs so I can still run the stock O2. I'll still leave that plugged in and kind of learn as I go if I want to tune that out. And because the Apexi Power FC cannot read wideband, I think most of the newer ECUs, you know, most standalones can probably, I'm not an expert on tuning, but can probably read wideband. You can run a closed loop uh, feedback system with that wideband, um, and it can probably correct itself for the certain air to fuel ratio you want at a certain RPM, certain load. Um, that's my guess. Uh, I haven't done a ton of research on that yet, but. For this you can't, so basically you have to do a lot of logging, a lot of corrections of your fuel maps to basically load in the fuel maps, in the ignition maps um, that get you that air to fuel ratio that you want and then you just run open loop off of those maps. I don't want to say hoping, but hoping that it creates that air to fuel ratio you want because the ECU is not reading the air to fuel ratio and seeing if it's good or bad. That's 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 totally separate from the ECUs. So the data logger is what I have 
coming on the way to be able to tune the ECU from my computer, but also to be able to log the air to fuel ratio with the serial output from the gauge itself. So if that makes any sense at all, um, hopefully, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and actually start installing this wideband sensor. I'd like to get it in the car while the car is still NA. Uh, maybe drive it around a little bit NA just to get a feel for it and um, kind of see where the stock ECU wants the air to fuel ratios to be. Then I'll hook up my Apexi Power FC, which is currently tuned uh, just for a stock uh, NA2ZZ, but it is adjusted a little bit to kind of smooth out the mid range and whatnot. So I'll plug that in, do the same thing, and be able to read and uh, get acquainted with the air to fuel ratios that. Uh, the car is running off of. So I got everything laid out that came with the wideband sensor. Uh, this is the 0300 um, part number, if you guys are wondering. And I got my instructions over here. So the first thing you're going to see whenever you open this up, and I'll throw it up on the screen, is that the uh, new wideband sensor that gets installed into the exhaust has to be at a certain angle and distance from either the cylinder head or the turbo. So in my case, I'm running supercharger, so no turbo would be coming from the cylinder head. And they basically say 18 inches downstream. Um, I installed mine uh, just slightly after the merge, uh, which gets me about that far from the cylinder head. And then the other important thing is to install it um, I believe they say a 10 degree angle above horizontal and basically that keeps moisture from settling in it if it were in the bottom of your exhaust. So as you saw um, in the last MR2 video, I did get the two bungs installed. Uh, one is for my stock O2 sensor, probably will get plugged someday. And then the other one is for the wideband. So that's what we're gonna install that in today. So for what all comes with the kit, we have the harness that goes directly from your sensor which is here. So there's that plug. Uh, so sensor into the exhaust, that plug goes into this harness and that plugs directly into uh, your gauge. So that's easy. Uh, so this is the harness that is gonna take more thinking and it's really pretty simple. So pretty much we have three different wires to worry about and today we only have two wires to worry about. That is the black wire and that is pretty easy. That's gonna be a ground. So that'll get ground to the chassis and then the red wire, which is uh, ignition switch. So that is our 12 volt power source. And then the other wires, um, the third wire I'm gonna need to worry about is the serial output, which will also get grounded, but that will connect to the data logit, which like I said, is on the way. For this purpose to get the gauge hooked up, I don't need that right now. So uh, it's just these two. And another really important note, as it states on here, uh, five amp fuse needs to be included. Uh, what I'm gonna do, you could either use an inline fuse like that, or what I'm gonna do is use one of my fuse taps here, throw a five amp fuse in it and uh, run it pretty much directly off of one of the other spots in the fuse box. So uh, you could go super OEM and tap into the fuse box and actually uh, wire into the connector. That way you're not seeing the, the fuse tap, but um, for my purpose, this is going to be fine. So just a quick look at the length of this harness that they supplied. Uh, it's going to be plenty long to get a gauge up, uh, probably on the pillar, uh, maybe right in front of the steering wheel. I don't have a mount for the gauge right now, so I'll just uh, kind of zip tie it somewhere. Um, I haven't decided if I want to go uh, pillar gauge pod or dash gauge pod. So uh, big, big decisions there. That's not a light decision to make. So for now, I'll just stick it in there uh, for tuning purposes. All right, so what I did, I went ahead and um, spliced in my fuse tap here. Usually I'd solder something like this, but it's gonna be inside the car. Um, AEM provided these, so I feel pretty good about that. So before I plug that in, I'm gonna go ahead and find a ground, and there happens to be a ground wire coming straight out of the harness that I'm just gonna tap into with one of these connectors once again. So uh, make it super easy. I already tested it, it uh, has a good ground Good connection to the chassis so i'm going to go ahead and just splice into that now i can just feed this uh fuse tap up into the fuse box up here so you can see got my ground hooked up here and then this is that uh ignition switch wire that uh, is up leading to this here so now all i need to do is find a fuse 
that is ignition, ignition switch and throw, um, basically swap places with that fuse, put the fuse into the bottom one here, and then the top one will be the one feeding uh, this uh, gauge wire. So I'll throw a five amp fuse in the top one to run that circuit, uh, which is what AEM calls for in the instructions. Now that I got that power harness for the gauge uh, installed, it looks good enough in there. Uh, that'll work just fine. Now it is time to take the uh, sensor harness and uh, fish that from the engine bay into the cabin. So this should be relatively easy because I actually have already fished um, some wires in through there. You can see my wires going in through the grommet. Those are actually the wires that I had to add for the 2ZZ swap to control the lift solenoid. So um, basically what I can do is just poke a hole through the grommet outside of the main harness and just fish it right through there. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll find a good spot to run it up along or maybe down below here where it's hidden and run it out to where my O2 sensor or a wideband sensor is gonna be. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. All right, so here's what I was talking about. Um, you can see here's my 2ZZ ECU. You can see I still have some tape on here from whenever I was labeling stuff. I just left it all on. Um, over here is the main harness. So that's a stock MR2 harness. And then this is my, um, these are my extended wires for the uh, lift solenoid. So I'm gonna basically just do the same thing, poke another hole through the side of it, feed that wideband sensor through. Um, and I'm gonna have to do the same for boost uh, boost gauge too. So, so that really should be simple enough. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the exhaust back on. That way I can get this uh, wideband sensor in. Um, I got my pigtail out here ready for the sensor to plug in. So uh, we'll do that. That way we can throw a battery in here and uh, see if our gauge works. All right, guys, we're all hooked up. I just need to get a battery on here and then I'm ready to crank it and uh, see what type of reading we get. Um, one thing to remember, I am still waiting on an exhaust gasket for the head. So I'm gonna have a huge um, exhaust leak there and possibly get some false readings at idle because of uh, it possibly sucking in air. So I'm just gonna keep that in mind, um, but I just wanna make sure the gauge works and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, got the is just hanging here on the steering wheel. Uh, see if it turns on. Oh yeah. All right, so one thing, um, one thing I actually learned just through my research, um, it actually has a heater in it that heats it up, but you don't wanna preheat the sensor before you start the car, cause then if it gets hot and then it blasts some like moisture at it or something, it could shock it and you could hurt it. So just, Something interesting. Sick. All right, let's try this again.
So as you could probably tell from uh, just that little bit of running, it seemed very temperamental, like it was fluctuating and actually going really lean. Um, I'm almost positive those are false readings from the fact that I'm missing my uh, header gasket in there. So it's most likely just sucking air in and uh, given basically too much oxygen to the sensor making it seem like it's rich so once i get that gasket in it'll probably uh, probably be a lot more stable and you won't see those uh lean readings because that is the stock uh, celica ecu so i um you know I, I trust that that is tuned you know that's the stock tune so they wouldn't have big lean spikes like that either way uh the gauge is working so I know I got it in there right, and I'm happy about that. Like I said, look out for the next video, which will be the intake piping um, along with the air cooling system that I'm going to be doing. Um, so that should be a very fun video, a lot to install on that one and a lot to figure out. And it should make this engine bay start looking like this thing's actually supercharged. Uh, get the piping all routed and everything. It should start looking pretty awesome. So Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys, again, once again, I hope you guys are enjoying all of the Toyota ZZ engine stuff. It's great learning all of this um, tuning stuff and boosting stuff on this uh, because at the same time, I'm hoping to uh, boost either the Celica or the Matrix. So I'm not, not too sure yet which one, but either way, stay tuned for just more of this, you know, cool stuff in the garage. So see you guys later.